Richard, your company doesn't even make hybrids. Why? Well, yes, we do. Holden, we're not selling any hybrids in Australia. Why don't you sell them in Australia? Well, I think Vic basically summed it up. At the moment, hybrids are still quite expensive and the price point is not there yet to have large-scale demand. Mm. Uh, now, we have plans in place that, yeah, at some stage we will certainly bring hybrids into the country. But that we're John, not there that's yet. a reasonable business decision, it's, isn't it? If, if... I hate to do this again, but we have to sheet it back to governments that have not introduced fuel efficiency standards on Australian sold motor vehicles. So uh, we'd all be forced to buy hybrids mm. or more hybrids. We, would be those... forced, we should be forced to buy more fuel efficient cars. We should be driving the market for more fuel efficient mm. cars. How would the industry respond to regulation that actually forced people into this area more? Richard, how? How would, how would your company respond to that? Well, as I said before, we would lay out the facts of what it would mean to the company overall, but in the end, if the government came down and said, this is what we're going to do, we would have to respond to it. So you do, that sounds very reluctant to me. Well, no, it, sounds, come... it sounds like we do what we had to do. But no, but as I than... said before, and has been mentioned many times, it's not hybrids are not the answer completely. They're just one part of the solution. So in Australia, Holden produces diesels and we have LPG. Now, there's been very little discussion tonight about LPG, but you know, LPG is a case in point where you have a fuel that you, know, you would think on the surface would have very wide acceptance, but it's only actually hitting a fairly small percentage of the market. And the... You know, the negatives with LPG are fairly small. So the fact that you've got a big price difference in LPG, yet only minor you know, negatives for the customer in terms of range and the fact that you lose a bit of cargo space, and we, we don't see a big um, you know, take-up of LPG. And why do you think that's not a take-up on that? Well, to bring any new uh, fuel into the market, you need three things. I mean, you need the technology, you need the infrastructure, and, but you also need the public acceptance. And so it would appear with LPG, you just don't quite have that acceptance. It sounds to me like something's not <laughs> gelling in all of this, that, that, that we've got on the one hand, we've got the car companies saying one thing and saying that they will, you know, they'd look at whatever was put forward. We've got, we haven't got government here, but we've certainly got demands for government to do something. John, what, what, where does that leave us in terms of where we go now? Well, we need governments at both levels, both state and federal, to start driving uh, both greenhouse reduction, fuel efficiency reduction, air quality standards on existing and on new motor vehicles. Uh, it has to be that we can no longer have governments that roll over to threats from the auto industry that, oh, if you don't do what we want or if you drive our standards too far, we will up stumps and go overseas with our manufacture. We need to get, we absolutely need to get tough on the auto industry and say this is what we need. Vic, a final comment from you because yeah, well, there's been criticism great, of the industry It's a great tonight. discussion because you know, I personally have been in a lot of those discussions with governments around, around Australia, state and federal, but particularly back in the, in the late 90s we were lobbying government to try and get some sort of concession or incentive or encouragement to bring hybrids to this country and we took a gamble and it was a big gamble at that time and it's, and it's paid off. We're, we're quite happy selling 300 hybrids a month. I've got to tell you that's more than a lot of other brands sell in this country so we sell 20,000 odd cars Okay you've done the spruik for yeah, how many but, you sell but... <laughs> but you know the encouragement side of it is really important and that leadership I think it's like really putting money where your mouth is and we're finding corporate Australia is doing that Every time we put a tender in these days, it takes like half a day to do the pricing. Easy. But it might take you two weeks now to answer a corporate tender on how responsible a company you are, how, how environmentally friendly your cars are, not just hybrids, but all your range, what you're doing for health and safety, all those things. We're not getting that necessarily uh, from government. You're not getting what from government? Those sorts of requests or guidance. So you're saying regulators. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think there is a fair bit of regulation that needs... Regulation is kind of setting the goalposts. You know, what are the goalposts so we can actually score a goal? Mm, Frank, what about, what about the oil industry? Well, regulation, you're looking forward to that? Well, we're already very highly regulated and our fuel standards are all uh, set quite firmly. Uh, and there's been a process over the last 10 years of dramatically ramping up fuel standards, which helps cut pollution. So regulation of the environment is very, very important to make sure things happen. You can't do without it. Um, just a couple of final more quick comments from people about, about behaviour and about changing behaviour, yes? Yeah, well, you can, you can bring all this new technology in and say we're going to have new petrols, but once that comes in, they're just going to jack up the prices and kill us anyway. <laughs> that's, that's the view of the oil industry, Frank. That's, that's what you're dealing with. Well, I think, Jenny, uh, higher prices are something that are really going to drive change. And we as oil companies understand the angst that causes, but 
higher prices are going to be a big factor in causing changes and public transport and things like that are needed to ease the pain for uh, average people. Matt, can you see yourself racing around that racetrack in an electric car? Um, a Ferrari bring one out possibly, but you know, part of the problem is the oil industry. They're, they're being very shifty on their pricing and every Easter the price goes up, after Easter the price goes down. Uh, it, it's, it's just a whole shifty pricing policy which is not uh, endeavouring to give me a lot of confidence in the future. Mm. Vanessa, what about you? After what you've heard tonight, any uh, likely changes for you? Has it made you think about it, the car? It's made me think about it, but if, if it was a, a case of I go to a car dealer and it's sitting there, I would buy it. But I wouldn't want to buy it if I'm waiting a year to six months and I can't choose a colour and I don't know what it's going to handle like, I can't test drive it. So until it's there in front of my face, I won't purchase it, I won't buy something I haven't driven. But as far as it comes to racing and, and doing all of that activity, I don't know whether they're ever going to be able to have the power that those cars already, you know, the older cars already have and they're tested and they're proven. And, and it's the power that's the thrill. Well, of course it is. You don't want to race something as a slug. <laughs> <laughs> OK, look, it's been terrific discussion. Thank you all very much uh, for joining Insight tonight. Terry Taminen in uh, Los Angeles, thank you very much for joining us too. It's been great to have you My with pleasure. us. And that is Insight for My this pleasure. week. But you can keep talking online at sbs.com.au slash insight. Insight's repeated on Friday at 1.30, again on Monday at 3.30. Next week, do you really know what you're eating? As genetically modified food becomes more common, we ask whether we really know how safe it is. That's next week. Until then, good night. We get a lot of uh, stories. We don't know whether they're true or not. And people are so paranoid about petrol prices and the fact they might not be able to afford to drive anywhere and they won't be able to afford their mortgage. We don't know any of the truth behind it all. I think the government on both levels needs to show more leadership in the issue. I've had my licence since I was 17 and I've never owned a car and I've managed to be mobile. I've taken the bike, I've walked, I've used public transport with the help of my employer. I've bought an annual travel pass and frankly I've been saving a lot more money than the people around in the audience. So there is hope. I love my car, my Holden Commodore, but given the difference in the petrol prices, I'm going to be changing over to public transport and trying to downsize.